translation and prepared by Srila Prabhupada, so translation. Whoever carefully recites the mysterious, <coughs> mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all miseries of life. Okay. Hope we don't lose contact. Uh, let me know if we do. But uh, this is the purple of Srila Prabhupada. As we can see, this is the Srimad Bhagavatam being handed down to Bridget Maharaj, which we are actually fortunate enough to be hearing today. The transcendental nectarine uh, words emanating from Sukadeva's mouth being repeated all throughout this time. So the purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead has declared that anyone who knows the principles of the transcendental birth and activities of the Lord will go back to Godhead after being relieved from this material tabernacle. So simply knowing factually the mysterious way of the Lord's incarnation in this material world can liberate one from material bondage. Therefore, the birth and activities of the Lord as manifested by Him for the welfare of the people in general are not ordinary. They are mysterious. And only by those who carefully try to go deep into the matter by spiritual devotion is the mystery discovered. Thus, one gets liberation from material bondage. It is advised, therefore, that one who simply recites this chapter of Bhagavatam, describing the appearance of the Lord in different incarnations, in sincerity and devotion, can have insight into the birth and activities of the Lord. The very word vimukti, or liberation, indicates that the Lord's birth and activities are all transcendental. Otherwise, simply by reciting them, one could not attain liberation. They are therefore mysterious, and those who do not follow the prescribed regulations of devotional service are not entitled to enter into the mysteries of his birth and activities. Om Jnana Timaram Desya Gananjana Salakaya Chakshus Om Nitam Nina Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stakitam Nina Bhutale Shama Pudipta Mayam Dhanti Swaha Dhanti Kam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Aveta Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Dr. Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pancha Kalpa Chibisha Kipasim Vibhita Patitna and Pagani Bhiro Vaishnava Bhiro Namo Namaha So the verse again Jinna Gyan Bhagavata Yaita Prayata Naraha Sayam Kato Grinam Bhakya Vipakrama Vinuchate Whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all the miseries of life. So you probably noticed how I highlighted this word prayata carefully in red here. Because uh, that's, I was thinking that's really important how, how we should hear, how we should recite very carefully like the sages and how Sukadeva was reciting very carefully also. Because here's another picture how the Bhagavatam is giving light to this darkness of the age of Kali, which is full of sinful activities and nefarious activities, as you can see going on in the bottom part of the, of the picture. But those who actually take advantage of these literatures and get light, they can get relief from these miseries, as is described in this Bhagavatam, in this particular verse. So, even in the Bhagavad Gita, it's described here in this Gita Mahatma verse that. Uh, if we carefully read the literature, Shastrani Dam Punyam Yapatet Prayataha Puman, that if one properly follows instructions of Bhagavad Gita, one can be freed from all miseries and anxieties of life. Baya Sokari Varjitaha, one will be freed from all fears in this life, and one's next life will be spiritual. So those pictures look very fearful, the dark, dangerous part of those images. And this is what we're living now in this age of Kali, which is full of 
it's an age of Kali, which is already, we're, you know, it's bad enough. All the good qualities of human being are destroyed by this age of quali- Kali. And um, our senses, they're trying to steal our greatest asset, which is, they're like our enemies. They're stealing that greatest asset, which is discrimination, without which we cannot even understand, you know, properly direction in this life and not only that the path of devotion is is so many stumbling and so many brambles in the form of our material desires trying to be happy here in this material world and uh, and also on top of that we are always disturbed we're completely agitated or we're always agitated and disturbed but without the mercy of the lord and his merciful rain cloud in the form of these transcendental words in the form of this sun you know to give us light from the Bhagavatam then we won't be relieved there's a nice just you can see there's so many different literatures which are not really necessary they're considered to be like literatures in which crows you know like to hang out and then you can see the bottom picture there's the devotees and reading the transcendental literatures they're like swans so this is what our activity should be there's this quote that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes how there's we get these urges by material identification and there's three of them the urge to speak the urge and demands of the mind and the demands of the body and when we type fall victim of these types of urges then our life becomes very inauspicious so writing a book reading books this is also described as an urge to speak he writes here that it's like useless talking like the impersonal my bodies or persons engaged in food activities or materialistic people who simply want to enjoy life without restriction all such talks or literatures are practical exhibitions of the urge to speak. So many people, they talk nonsensically and they write volumes of this useless you know, verbiage, useless sounds that are completely unnecessary. And it's all because of the urge to speak. So to counteract that, it's recommended that we divert our talking to the subject of Krishna. And that's explained in the Shiva Bhagavatam. How those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a place of pilgrimage or crows, since all perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. And then the next verse is, on the other hand, that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendent glories of the name, fame, form, pastimes, etc., of the unlimited Supreme Lord, is a different creation. Full of transcendent words directed toward bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental literatures, even though imperfectly composed or heard and sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. So the conclusion is that we should only talk about devotional service of Krishna. And then that way we'll refrain from this useless urge to speak. So that's the recommendation. So that one verse, one word that we talked about, prayataha, it's translated in different ways. With proper attention, we should hear. With a subdued mind, with great attention, with great care. We should meditate upon it and we should be being very careful. So this is a very powerful word on how we should actually do that. And all these particular, this word is used in many slokas all throughout the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, all throughout the the spiritual literatures which give us benedictions, you know, on hearing. Here's one example you know, it's described that if we just chant the character and activities of Guru Maharaj, both in the morning and the evening, with great attention and care in the society of 
other Brahmins or Christians. So we should do this. And there's so many stories after stories after stories that at the end says, if you chant this, then you'll get a special benediction. You'll be relieved from sin. You'll, be, you'll attain the spiritual destination. You'll do so many things. It's not that Krishna's blessings are just, you know, they just come and then that's it, period. The no is blessing, comma, blessing, comma, 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 comma. So many blessings, so much nectar that we could take advantage of. It just comes and comes and comes. In the purport to that particular verse, the Prabhupada discusses how important the association of devotees is. And here, I highlighted here that thus the discussion of Srimad Bhagavatam, which describes the character and pastimes of devotees of the Lord, is very quickly affected. So not only of Krishna's pastimes, but also of his devotees. And as far as today, there is continuous devotional service going on. Anyone who comes in contact with this society automatically becomes a devotee. We have asked experience and many karmic and let's just see this recently there's a few people this trend is coming through they come to the temple they stop by and they see and they make you coming back and keep coming back and then eventually you see them shave up and start wearing devotional clothes coming to all the classes they just get a taste it's nectar you know it's really ecstatic so here's another part of that that how he talks about initiation and how we the devotees eventually take initiation and how the spiritual father becomes now to take another birth is the Vedic knowledge. So it says here, at the present moment, throughout the entire world, the educational system is geared to produce sudras. A big technologist is no more than a big sudra. Kalo sudra sambala. In Asia Kali, everyone is a sudra because the whole population of the world consists only of sudras. There's a decline of spiritual knowledge, and people are unhappy. The Krishna consciousness movement has been started, especially to create qualified brahmanas to broadcast spiritual knowledge all over the world. It is, for us, people may become very happy. So the, we have been given this light, so we should imbibe it and read it very carefully, meditate on it. And in that way, we can also broadcast it, become light beings, and share, you know, spread our light. Here's another example of the Bhagavatam where we hear the story of Gajendra. And look what it says here that my dear King Prabhupada should have now described the wonderful power of Krishna is displayed when the Lord delivered the king of the elephants, O best of the crude dynasty. Those who hear this narration become fit to be promoted to the higher planetary systems. Simply because of hearing this narration, they gain a reputation of dev- as devotees. They're unaffected by the contamination of Kali Yuga. And they never see bad dreams. So just see, we're in this age, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, dark age, we're all in this degraded age of Kali, this dark age. But simply by hearing this narration of Krishna as a devotee, his devotee can be an elephant. Look at the, the benefit we get. In this particular purport, after the gender offered his wonderful prayer, you know, it's not that same purport, but after the Gajendra offered his wonderful prayers, Krishna said to him, freed from all sinful reactions are those who rise from bed at the end of the night, early in the morning, and fully concentrate their minds with great attention upon my form, upon your form. He's talking to Gajendra. This lake, you know, where you're at, the mountain where you're near, the caves which are nearby, the gardens, and it goes on and on and on describing all the different things that are in relation to Krishna, that they get free from all these sinful reactions. Isn't it amazing? You just meditate on Krishna's energy, his, his carrier, his barrier, Garuda, all these things. There's so much potency. This is Krishna. This is Krishna. Anything in relation to Krishna. Here's another nice quote. My dear devotee, and to those who rise from bed at the end of night and offer me the prayers offered by you. These are the prayers offered by Gajendra. I give an eternal residence in the spiritual world at the end of their lives. 
So here it is, comma after comma, blessing after blessing we get. Krishna is, it's like, uh, you know, currency. Currency keeps coming. There's so much wealth. There's so much nectar to be attained. Here's another nectar verse. Yaitam pratar utaya krishnaya padavin param prayata kirtaye bhaktya tamevapnoti anuttamam. Anyone who regularly rises early in the morning and carefully chants with devotion the glories of Lord Sri Krishna's transcendental disappearance and his return to his own abode will certainly achieve that same supreme destination. And then there's another nice one. It's Sri Krishna. Krishna Sakya Vishnu Visabhavani Dhrug Rajanaya Vamsa Dahana Napavar Gavirya Govinda Gopavani Oh Krishna, friend of Arjuna, O oh, chief among the descendants of Vishnu, you are the destroyer of those political parties that are disturbing elements on the earth. Your prowess never deteriorates. You are the proprietor of the transcendental abode and your most safe glories, which are sung by the Dhaban's coward men and women and their servants bestow all auspiciousness just by being heard. O oh Lord, please protect your devotees. It's a nice verse. So here we can see, this is from the 12th Cano, the great sages were hearing the same narration that Sukadeva was speaking, and that the Sutta Goswami was narrating this to the sages. And this is what they say. O oh, great sages, I have narrated to you the wonderful pastimes of Lord Vishnu as you inquired about them for me. Hearing such narrations is a suitable engagement for a person who is actually a human being. This literature fully glorifies the Supreme Personality of God, Ed Hari, who removes all his devotees' sinful reactions. The Lord is glorified as Narayan, Rishikesh, and the Lord of the Sattvatas. So this goes on in this 12th chapter of the 12th canon kind of summarizes the Srimad Bhagavatam, then it gives you all the different benedictions here, starting with verse 58, and uh, how it destroys all inauspiciousness. And again, it uses that same word of undeviating attention. I constantly recite this literature every moment, every hour. Even if you hear one verse or half a verse or a single line or even half a line, you will become purified. And if you hear it on special days like a codice or duodice, then you'll be purified from all your simple reactions. And if you fast at a holy place and study the scripture, you'll be freed from all fear. So all these temples are holy places. And uh, it says here those who glorify this prana, hearing it, you know, all the demigods, sages, pipas, mandras, and kings to will bestow all the desirable things. And if you study this Bhagavatam, you know, you can achieve the same uh, effects by studying the Rig Yajur Sama and the Vedas. And the Brahmana who diligently reads the central composition of the Puranas, he'll go to the supreme destination. And here, there's so many that if you study this Bhagavatam, you know, you'll gain soul into the earth if you're a king. If you're a vaisa, you'll acquire treasures. If you're a sudra, you'll be freed from sinful reactions. And it just goes on and on, just one after another, describing all the great benefits you can receive from this narration of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's so nice how we become such a pure transcendence. So his offering is respectful obeisances, you know, to a spiritual master who is Sukadev Goswami, and it is he who defeats all inauspicious things within this universe. Although in the beginning he was indulging the happiness of Brahman realization and was living in a secluded place, giving up all the types of consciousness, he became attracted by the pleasing, most melodious pastimes of Lord Krishna. He therefore mercifully spoke the Supreme Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the bright light of the Absolute Truth and which describes the activities of the Lord. So here's a nice verse that, uh, from the tenth canto. Nivrata tarshar upagi yamanad, babao saudats tutramano bhimat, ka uttama sloka gunanu vadat, 
Kuman Vajita Vina Pasud Nat. This actually part of this verse is one of the glorifications of chanting Hare Krishna. This Nirita uh, Tasha Pagamanad. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of God is performed in the Parampara system. That is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished by those no longer interested in false temporary glorification of this causal manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self? So, this is a very sweet verse. It's nice. How we have to hear it, Papa, time and time again says how we have to hear it you know, in specific succession from, that goes back to Krishna. This is how it's kept pure. Not by those speculators or, you know, those people that do it for some profit. So, this is the warning. And uh, the last part of this, it says, the Krishna consciousness movement is therefore trying to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general in all parts of the world may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. And this is what's happening. Prabhupada created this movement, and you can see it's going on today. All over the world, there's devotees of the Krishna consciousness movement traveling and preaching in this way. Because, as in this verse, it describes if anyone willing or, or unwillingly hears Krishna Katai, Kata, his bhava roga, the disease of birth and death, will certainly stop. Therefore, Krishna Kata is called bhava Shara the remedy to stop the repetition of birth and death. Karmis are persons attached to material sense enjoyment, generally cannot give up their material desires, but Krishna Kata is such a potent medicine that if one is induced to hear Krishna Kata or Kirtan, he will certainly be freed from this disease. And then he uses the example that we show the picture of Guru Maharaj, how he wanted material things, but because he was actually engaged by approaching this, the Supreme Personality got it, then he became so satisfied and he was actually embarrassed that he was asking for something, you know, material because he was so satisfied just to see Krishna. He said, I was praying for broken glass and I found like a gem. And here's an important verse here. You are the embodiment of all human goals. This is Krishna. You are yourself the final aim of life. Desiring to attain you, O all-powerful Lord, Intelligent persons abandon everything else. It is they who are worthy of your association, not men and women absorbed in the pleasure and grief resulting from their mutual lust. So this shows you how, let's say again, so absorbed we have in material themes, lust after so many different things, mundane literatures, mundane activities, we should become absorbed and carefully read with full attention in these bhagavatams. This should be our focus. So here today you can see many devotees are gathered. This just happened uh, yesterday, Sunday feast lecture. And here's a nice congregation. They're inquiring about spiritual life from the devotees that come. And this is one of the traveling preachers, traveling all over the world, Jai Pataka Swami. And doing this, as Sri Prabhupada has given us this uh, proper this, this kind of movement, in order for the devotees to travel and preach the science of Krishna consciousness. And this is what they are doing following instructions of Srila Prabhupada. And you can see there is no hindrance. Japataka Maharaj had a stroke and half of his body is paralyzed. Half of his face is paralyzed, as you can see. But look how powerful he is preaching, spreading Krishna consciousness worldwide. It's just amazing that we, can, we have such nice devotees traveling the world, giving us this message and relieving us of this dire influence of Kali Yuga and the influence of our sinful activities and material absorption. And right now, going on in the temple, we have another traveling preacher, Gira Swami, who has traveled all over the world, preaching Krishna consciousness, helping devotees become, helping, you know, everyone become devotees, so this is going on right now in the class. I just was over there this morning. I took a picture during the Bhagavatam class and here in the temple room it's going on. So we have great souls coming, following Prabhupada's footsteps. So you can all do that. <clears throat> As you can see, there's many devotees here. 
there's another traveling sannyasi coming in there. He's there, and here's, you can see Ramashar is actually sitting there. He's coming back, listening. He comes here so often. Here's the Bhagavatam. And here we have all these holy tirtas in front of the deities, the most wonderful, beautiful deities of the world, Shishirukmi and Dorkadish. By coming before them and chanting and dancing, reciting the Bhagavatam, reciting verses, performing devotional service in their dham, we are completely becoming purified and becoming eligible to go back home, back to Godhead, which is our real home, our real nature, our spiritual nature, getting revived. So that's the nectar that we have. We should take advantage of. There's so much nectar. You know, blessing after blessing we've been given, the gifts that we've been given by Sri Prabhupada and by his disciples and his grand disciples going and distributing his transcendental down vibrations, his transcendental light to elevate all the conditioned souls and relieving them from all their sinful reactions. So that's the Srimad Bhagavatam, how powerful it is. So let's read the verse again. That whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearance of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all the miseries of life. And this is going on today. This is happening. Happened 5,000 years ago, and now it's happening today. The same things are going on throughout the world. So we're very fortunate. We take advantage of this. So much nectar pastimes. So much benedictions. And it's going on today still. Right now, as we speak. (laughs) We're doing it ourselves. (laughs) And there's so many temples it's going on right now. And this class is going on right now still. Just talking about the Juhu, it's actually the, I think, the, the uh, what do they call it? <clears throat> the anniversary of the Juhu Temple opening. So he's talking about that whole pastime. Despite all difficulties, how Prabhupada struggled to open that temple to make a facility for people to hear and chant about these transcendental pastimes of Krishna and engage in devotional service. So, I'm in the class there. If anybody has any comments or questions or realizations, please comment. Who does? Go to, go to she. Uh, I'd like Please? to ask you a question about this last, this last uh, picture you still have up on the screen. Yeah. And the, the question about, relates yeah. to... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, my question relates really to the topic of of today's class, the potency of hearing the Bhagavatam and what nectar that is. Right. That it's, that it's the medicine that, that will take us from our conditioned state in this material world is completely covered in darkness and take us back to the lotus feet of Krishna. How potent it is to hear this in the morning and the evening. I find it surprising, unless this picture is somehow distorted, that with a huge community that you have at New Dwarka, there are so few devotees there. And again, now maybe that's a distorted picture and I'm not giving me a good idea yeah, of how many true. devotees are actually there, but from, from the picture it looks like quite surprising Giri Raj Maharaj is speaking. It, it, it just looks like a handful yeah. of devotees for a huge community. Could you explain? Uh, actually, there's more people coming. I came early and you're seeing Jai Radama then. And... Uh, and uh, they, they, it's probably full now. But uh, can I? Can you guys discuss that? And if someone, some emergency came up, I'm going to go to the door and, and see what's going on, and I'll be right back, okay? So you guys could talk. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Okay. Keep it going. All right. So, so I guess from Goda's answer, apparently this is just the beginning, trying around run out of and, and, and more devotees are coming. It just, from the picture, it kind of caught me. It looks like there's, you know, we're maybe seeing 10 or so devotees there. I thought there'd be like 100 devotees all crowded in for Bhagavatam at, at New York. But, uh, anyway, that was my question. Yeah, especially in the area as Yeah, I mean, it's very, 
very surprising. It looks like it's practically empty. And, uh, and another question I was going to ask him, uh, Rameshwar, it's nice he pointed out that, that uh, Rameshwar was there. I was going to ask him if Rameshwar is giving Bhagavatam classes. Again, he's an amazing preacher. And I know he's, he's back on his feet again. And um, according to Shastra, that, um, you know, so you, you have a fall down, or you pick yourself up, and then very quickly you go right back to where you left off. And uh, I was wondering if he's giving classes because he's one of the most uh, wonderful speakers I, I've ever heard. And uh, so that was my that would be my second question to go to when he comes back. Hare Krishna. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have something I can say. Um, uh, I like what though, the Chantal Prabhu was mentioning about uh, that listening is not the mouth. It's, um, he was elaborating on purport, Prabhupada's purport, that... And what's uh, not enough? That just listening is not enough. And uh, that it has to be, after that, it's like a three stages it has to be. That after the hearing, it has to be reflected. And after that, we have to act upon and then uh, meditate on it. Well, that's, that's a so, symptom. I mean, if you actually hear, I mean, in one sense, if you hear, hearing is enough. If you hear... You have to act. I mean, it'll, it's, it's, a, um, uh, it's a symptom that you heard. It's just like if I say the building is on fire, there's flames coming, we've got to get out of here, we're going to burn up to a crisp. If, if you heard, then it just naturally follows you're going to get out. But if you're just kind of dozing and not really paying careful attention to what I said, you're just going to sit there and burn up. You're not going to value nearly as much from what was spoken as someone who's listening very sincerely. And that word that Goda had highlighted, um, I don't remember the exact word, but um, I don't have the verse in front of me right now. But uh, he was saying that we have to hear carefully. So if you hear carefully and you have heard, then guaranteed you're going to act. And that's how we can tell the people who heard and the people that didn't hear and even from a material perspective, people that hear materially, you know, even in, 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 in a mundane arena, people who have heard will act, and people who don't hear don't act. It's kind of like a, you know, the person who pretends to be sleeping. Um, you know, he, he doesn't want to hear, therefore you can't wake him up. So that's a symptom of, of hearing if we heard then we'll be so inclined. We can't stop ourselves from acting. You can't help yourself from getting out of the room. But at the same time, if you hear that there's, a, there's some great nectar, some eternal sweetness right in the next room, just do this, do that, and you can swim in an ocean of nectar. If you actually heard, boy, you'll be heading for it. But if you're not really hearing, you're not really listening carefully, then, then the action won't follow. So I would say that that action is a symptom of hearing. Right. Just wanted to um, read one um, verse from uh, uh, that I think from Bhakti Yam's uh, Maharaj seminar that uh, in Brihat Aranyakya Upanishad he quotes one verse very interesting um, uh, that where is uh, Yadya Valkya Muni referring to his wife Maitreya and he said this very famous verse about about uh, exactly about what we're talking about, about uh, listening. And uh, if he says that Atma or spirit must be seen, and uh, standing here in the imperative mood, and he says, you must not, my dear wife, my prayer, to be content that you just formally proclaim the existence of the soul, that spirit, or God. And... Uh, he says, Maitreya, please do not become a traditional believer. You have to see that spirit. In other words, you have to get the real experience of it. And also, when he says, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita the same thing, that uh, this Dharma experience, this Dharma experience is tasteable. It's very tasty. 
So, and it's, anyway, I really like how he says it's all three stages, that there are different listeners. Sometimes we may listen and say it was great, but we don't remember even. <laughs> so the meditation is very important on it. That's all I want to say. Well, don't worry. I mean, you know, it's Kali Yuga, and, and the medicine's still going to act. I mean, it's great if you can remember. It's nice to write down notes. But the reality is when you listen to a class, the reality is a lot of it we're just going to hear it and we're going to, we won't remember it. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a very unfortunate fact. We're not Shrutidars. Shrutidar means one who hears and he grasps it. But the reality is I, we, most of what we hear, we're not going to remember Good to try to remember if we can, but don't be discouraged if you don't remember everything you heard. The medicine's still going to act. That sound vibration that we heard, whether we remember or don't remember, as long as we heard sincerely, it's going to go to our heart and we're going to become purified. And remember where the realization comes from. So actually, it's not, like, it's not just physically that you're physically listening. We show Krishna and Guru our sincerity when we listen, and then, um, as Krishna says, with that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Yesham Evano Karpantam Ahama Gyanam Maha Nashe Nyatna Babasto Gyanadi Pena Vasvata. Krishna says that, that uh, I, dwelling within their heart, destroy with a shining lamp of knowledge a darkness born of ignorance. So that realization. In hearing, I mean, we hear, we sit down, we try to listen, we really focus our mind, we show Krishna and show, our, show Guru that we're really trying to listen. But the realization comes by the, by the blessing of Krishna and Guru. So anyway, um, don't be, just, don't be a, maybe I'm preaching to myself, but don't be so discouraged if you can't so much remember everything you heard or all the points. The benefit is still there from sincerely listening and then Krishna within our heart will destroy with that shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Just like we saw in that picture that Goda showed us where the, 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 the light was coming down from above. That light comes within our heart. It's not an academic process. It's not like going to college to learn something. It's a, it's a spiritual meditation and then Krishna within the heart enlightens, gives us the realization then we should act once we have that realization, where the realization may go away. You got Rafa. Right. Well, can thank you, you tell the story? Nice. St- huh? no, can you tell the story nice about Gokarna? Well, everybody knows the story of Gokarna, but uh, but I think I like uh, uh, Narayanan's point because it's true. It's not like we have to memorize. We, we're not going to be able to because it's Kali Yuga. And we just have to endeavor, and Krishna gonna, uh, you know, in, uh, Krishna gonna bless us. He's gonna give realization, like he just said, and we have to act on it. I really like this point, Prabhu. Yeah, no, that's how I mean, that's how it works. It, it, we really can't get caught up in thinking this is an academic, anything like college, where you sit there in class and, and listen and learn. It's for it's all about enlightenment. This is not an this is not an ascending process, it's a descending process. I mean, only to some limited degree is it ascending, where we show our sincerity and we sit and listen, but the realization is going to come by the descending process, by Krishna and Guru. And especially, right. as I said, yeah, don't, yeah, don't worry if you don't remember so much. Yeah, but I didn't make a point about uh, academic learning, more, more like uh, that we have to control our minds by trying to remember what we, what we heard that throughout the day. That's all I'm trying to say. So. That's, yeah, I, agree. I agree completely. Absolutely. I, I find I that if I can at least grab, if I can at least grab one, one or two things from the class that I heard, mm-hmm. if I can just kind of, one particular point sticks out in my mind, that then it may not be the main point that was spoken about, or maybe some small thing that, that the speaker was speaking on, but if we can just kind of grab one thing and keep that in our mind throughout the day, that's, um, at least for me, that works really well. I know I'm not going to remember everything, but okay. one or two points that 
to hold me through and meditate upon. I think Gota's back. Yes, he just came back. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jai, I'm sorry uh, there was an emergency I had to go take care of. No. Nope. Uh, the, the police are actually at my door, and there's like three or four people involved, so oh. I had to do some stuff. It's nothing serious, but just some... Goda, I was going to ask you, um, um, yeah. so you, you, you pointed out that Rameshwar was there in class, and, and um, I know that he's back, you yep. know, back in he's here in. and very serious about his spiritual life. Is he giving classes? Because he was one of the most... One of the most uh, one of the best speakers I've ever heard. Is he giving Bhagavatam classes again? Yeah, he does give classes uh, here, and uh, he does. Uh, he sits on the floor. It's kind of humble, and uh, but he gives some powerful classes. He's been giving, and you can see him on uh, LALive.us. There's a few. If you go to the archives, you can listen to a few of those classes. And amazing Prabhupada pastimes, amazing things about book distribution and things like that. But yeah, he comes here regularly and spends like a, a week, like maybe two or three times a year. He regularly goes to the New York Temple, and he just comes and takes a break. All he does is come here and chant and, you know, goes to the program. So it's very nice. Yep, that's and, evidence. Uh, that's yeah. evidence supporting what's said in all the scriptures. Bernardo says, for example, text by, uh, what is that verse? Tasha Dharma Charanam Bhujam Re Bajana Patota Petito Yedi Yetraka Vabadana Buddha Mushikim Karvata Apto Bajatan Sadharmata. That, you know, even if one falls down for whatever reason due to immaturity, a pakla, and um, when he comes back, you just take right up where you left off. So that's yeah. very encouraging. Yeah, so here's here's the Sunday feast. Uh, I don't know if you still see my screen or not, but there's a Sunday feast lecture by Jeff Takamaj. You can see so many people coming for the first time, you know, getting a, getting the, the taste of Krishna consciousness and bhakti yoga. So yeah, nice. I uh, hope you guys are able to get something out of the class. And uh, I think you mentioned a couple of things that you got out of the class, you now, Harvey Prabhu. I was wondering what they were. Oh, no, we were talking about um, um, the Yuga Larasa was, was, was asking about hearing um, oh, the yeah. importance of, of the topic of, of remembering what you heard in the class. And some mm-hmm. of the things that we were saying, at least that I was saying, was that you know, the reality is you're not going to remember everything from the class but if we can just try to remember some some little thing that sort of particularly sticks out in our mind, and in this particular class, what really stuck out for me, your main point, is that we really have to listen with with sincerity, and because um, I know we're not going to remember that much, but just uh, really try to sit and concentrate and listen, and just pray to Krishna to to give us a realization of what's being spoken. And that's really what the class is all about. It's, we're talking about it's not an academic process. Is that we hear very, very sincerely with great attention. You made that point really well. That's the main point that's going to stick in my mind is how important it is with real sincerity to listen. And then the realization comes from within the heart. Um, yeah, that's true. And also, it's, as I said, Nityam Bhagavata Seva, we have to constantly hear that because we forget, we have to hear every day, Papa said, morning and evening, like I said, whoever hears this every hour, every day, you know, we get so many benedictions. So, some or another, with this technology of today, we can have our iPods filled with nectar as we're walking around, we could be listening to lectures, you know, as we walk around, we could be talking to people that we know, our friends, about Krishna, instead of talking about, you know, what this person did, what that person did, and spreading rumors, and, you know, just like flies, you know, looking at people's faults. But no, we just all observe in Krishna. Some another always bring Krishna into the picture, mm-hmm. constantly, because a Kali Yuga makes us forget. So it's Nityam Bhagavata Siva, yeah. Like you said, yeah, we have to sincerely do this. And you know, pick out one point you could meditate on for the day. You know, with carefully means like you know, you meditate on the verse today. You know, like carry out to the day. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Go to <clears throat> go to G. Okay, I'm so sorry. But yes, Prabhu. So your emergency is now older over. You preach to the uh, police <laughs> and whoever needed to be preached to. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you. I have I, I have a question and a uh, <laughs> I got a question and a request. One is that in the purport. Uh, this is amazing how Prabhupada says that anyone who understands the principles of Krishna's birth and activities, they're eligible to uh, go back home, back to Godhead after they quit their body. Boy, that's really something. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I just wondered what your comment on that was. And then the other thing was, um, I was just wondering, do you know the history of Gokarna? What do you mean, Gokarna? Okay. So, well, well, go ahead and answer that question, and maybe I can tell the story real quick, because there at least one devotee said they... Is this the verse you're talking about? Like, anyone who regularly rises in the morning and... Um, his own well, you, you know, like this. the verse, Janma Karma Chame Div Yum, um, oh, it, yeah, it, yeah. Would, it says that you know, simply by understanding uh, my birth and activity after going leaving this material body, you will immediately go back to the spiritual world. So the question yeah. comes that, well, okay, I've heard of Krishna and I accept his uh, transcendental nature of his birth and activity. Uh, so what does that mean? Do you need to have full realization or at what point or you know, what exactly does that mean if you just hear and accept? The way that it's stated here is it's, Anyone who simply understands the principle of his, the transcendental nature of his birth and activities is eligible to go back to Godhead. So I w- was Where running. Where are you getting the word principle? It's the first sentence of the purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead declares that anyone who knows the principles of the transcendental birth activities of the Lord okay, will so go back in, to Godhead. That's in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Can I, take a, can I take a whack at that piñata? <laughs> okay. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode or Arjuna. Uh, I, I don't know where the immediate you know, transfer comes from, but it's a gradation. And it, and it rhymes with this morning's verse. Uh, it's a, it, it really is linked to this uh, Bhagavatam verse. Whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and the evening gets relief from all miseries of life. So it's a deepening. It's a gradation. It's a deepening realization until someone, as in the purport, so simply knowing the factually, uh, knowing factually the mysterious ways of the Lord's incarnation in this material world can liberate one from bondage. So um, this chapter it begins with the, describing the Purusha avatars, and from Garbhadaksha Vishnu, uh, from Maha Vishnu, uh, the Purusha avatars expand and also the material and uh, the universal form, all the material elements. So uh, there's the expansion of Shuradakshai Vishnu, who's also the Paramatma of all living beings. And all the incarnations within the universe are expanded from there. So the conclusion, I'm reading from the purport here, one of the first verses. From Therefore the conclusion is that the Purusha avatar is manifested in three features. First, the Karna Dakshai, who, that's Mahavishnu, who creates the aggregate material elements in the Mahatattva. Second, Garbha Dakshai, who enters in each and every universe. And third, the Shira Dakshai, Vishnu, who is the Paramatma of every material object, organic or inorganic. So then Prabhupada says in this purport, one who knows these plenary features of the personality of Godhead knows Godhead properly. And thus the knower becomes freed 
from the material conditions of birth, death, old age, and disease, as it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, it's a gradation. And what's interesting is that, you know, at first I thought, does this mean reciting this, this chapter? Because uh, I, I've read that somewhere that if you recite this chapter in the, e in the morning and the evening. And, and so I started going through the chapter, and there's 22 incarnations mentioned in this chapter. The ten, the Das Avatar, Matsya, Korma, Varaha, Nishringa, Vamana, Balaram, Buddha, and Kalki. Then besides that are the four Kumaras, Devashi, Narada, Nara Narayan, Kapila, Dattatreya, Yajna, King Rishabha, Pritu, Dhanvantari, and Mohini Avatar, and Veda Vyas himself. Plus Krishna is actually the 22nd. They're mentioning uh, in the verse we read a few days ago, the 21st and 22nd incarnations are Krishna and Balaram. And then, of course, Krishna's, Krishna's to Bhagavan Svayam. He's the original Vishnu. So if you understand all that, and also it, it's kind of interesting that, um, you know, the 12 or the 11 other empowered and plenary expansions of Krishna are mentioned, um, they must have some importance besides the Das Avatar. So it's probably a good idea to familiarize ourselves with, with the you know, what's uh, the specific incarnations that are mentioned in this chapter. Because the more we do this, the more we become, uh, we m the more we understand the actual proper conception of Godhead and, and His mysterious activities. Not that we're going to understand them in full, but we have a proper understanding of how things are, this creation came to be and uh, the specific incarnations that are meant to awaken us in, to different levels of realization. Does that work? I, yeah. I have a question about this specifically. Um, does it mean, in, in my understanding, that uh, this understanding of Krishna's appearance and disappearance means that it's a um, change of the heart has to happen? Exactly. Yeah, I think that's true. I think what your question, uh, Ratmananda, about that first sentence in the purport, that uh, declare anyone who knows the principles of the transcendent birth and activities of the Lord go back to Godhead. Right? That's right. Yeah, so it, it's interesting in the last sentence, Prabhupada mentions that there are therefore, they are therefore mysterious and those who do not follow the prescribed regulations of devotional service are not entitled to enter into the mysteries of his birth and activities. So as you are for saying uh, that, you know, we have to have a change of heart, we have to follow these prescribed regulations and then those Mysteries will be revealed to us. I, I don't know. It's when I was pointing that out, I didn't want to give the impression of thinking, okay, I understand Krishna. Whew, I'm done here. I can do whatever I like. Yeah. I didn't want to give yeah, that yeah. impression. Mine was more like, but the it's amazing the potency of hearing Krishna Kata from the authorized source yeah. with the proper understanding that simply by right. hearing about the Lord and understanding the principle of His transcendental appearance, yeah. that in itself will allow you to go back home to Godhead. I'm not saying that you don't have to follow the regular principles, that you don't have to become completely purified. That's not my point. But yeah. I'm trying to glorify the, the power of, of transcendental sound. Yeah. Yeah, that is powerful. Now, Prabhupada says that even those who don't want to hear, or they're just in that process, they hear it, they become, you know, purified. It's great. Yeah. 
but the real test is whether at the time of death, if we're, you know, that's why we try to get absorbed in his pastime so that at the time of death we'll be thinking of Krishna. That's a real test. And then we'll go back to him. So that's how to be absorbed and be natural. Jai Prabhu's. Thank you for your tolerance and everything. Sorry for the interruption. Can I just uh, tell one uh, quick story? It'll take just like uh, 60 seconds. How's that? No problem. Okay. Just that uh, it, um, there is a, a history of a, a uh, Brahmana by the name of Gokarna uh, who went back home, back to Godhead, simply by hearing the recitation of the Bhagavatam. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, this Brahmana, he died and under very unfavorable circumstances and he became a Brahma Rakshasha, which means a Brahmana who becomes a ghost. Uh, he inhabited uh-huh. a tree, as many times ghosts do. They inhabit to different yeah. entities like, let's say, tree. So his brother knew that what had happened to him and that he was had taken shelter of this tree. So his brother invited all of the uh, villagers to come and hear recitation of the Bhagavatam. So they sat down and heard the entire Bhagavatam uh, underneath this tree where Gokarna had uh, uh, possessed. And at the end of that time, the cre- I, I believe the tree actually cracked and this effulgent form came out, and then a airplane from Vaikuntha came and took him away back home, back to Godhead. Uh, and the villagers saw this, and they were amazed. And then they asked the brother, "Why is it that we heard Bhagavatam this under the the same tree during the same time, and we didn't go back home, back to Godhead, and neither did you?" Uh, so the reason was is because even though uh, they had heard, uh, they didn't hear with the same intensity as Gokarna, who was in such a distressed condition. And also, he's, he was very pure, you know, because he was Brahmana. Uh, before, he saw his mistake and in a distressed condition. When he heard the Bhagavatam, he heard it with rapt attention, like mm-hmm. his whole existence depended on it. And uh, because of the condition of, of uh, how he heard, that's why he went back home, back to Godhead immediately. You know, the, uh, for instance, those who were listening, they went back home and they went to sleep. And, you know, although they were very sincere, but it wasn't of the, the same intensity as Gokarna. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, somebody knows, but I think after that, after hearing this, uh, also, the villagers, along with the brother, uh, heard with the same intensity, and then they all went back home, back to God after that. But anyway, that's the short version yeah. of that. Yeah. Piranha. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that now. It's nice. Thank you, Ramananda. It's awesome. Joy. Ramananda, where, where's that story? I remember it, but I can't remember where I, where I read it or heard it. Where is that? Do you remember which Purana that comes from? I don't remember where it comes from. Anyway, one of the Puranas. Sorry. But, um, is, is, it in any, is, is it in any of our books? I hear D- Damayanti. She might know. Oh, oh, no, I don't know where. Um, is that the same um, Gokarna that's celebrated in the place in Go- of Goa called Gokarna? Or is that uh, I look. I'm not an authority on it. This is what I heard <laughs> from a lecture that uh, Dr. Gyan Maharaj gave and Jai Sachinanda Swami gave. I think Jai Pataka Maharaj also tells the story. So I'm just um, repeating what I heard. Okay. Yeah. So I had this question though. It doesn't mean though. Like say somebody's rapt attention listening, it doesn't mean that they're gonna immediately die. Because you die sometimes. So you might like trans. You might really lose your material consciousness to be like living in Vrindavan even in the same body because then you don't have to get discouraged I didn't die yet I must not be listening with rapid attention 
But if you're like material consciousness died, those that Krishna's letting us all die just like that. He wants us to do some work here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't understand what you're saying. What? I'm saying that they are, there's, because he was listening with rapt attention, he just left his, his ghost body and went back to Godhead. But sometimes you don't actually get to leave your body, you just keep staying on your own body. I guess probably because you're. Your consciousness is. So it's changed, though you're not like still having any kind of body in a way becoming spiritualized. So, and that's also happening, right? Even when people are listening with rapt attention and they're becoming transferred to now they have a spiritual body because they're engaging children in Christian service. Or are we going to think that we're not listening rapidly and we're just not leaving our bodies? <laughs> yeah, anyway, sh- I, I couldn't try to hear because every other word was dropping off. And was okay. Off. Oh, well. But, uh, sounds like I don't have my mic on. Okay. So you're just making the point that not everyone that listens with wrap attention when they achieve perfection that they'll leave their body. But their their consciousness will become purified. Yeah, okay. Jai Jai. I'll go to my Bhagavatam. Jai. Jai. Thank you, Gauta G. Thank you all. Thank you, Gauta Gender Prabhu. Jai, I'll play the Srila Prabhupada. Jai, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.